every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good evening and thank you for joining us on Core TV Primetime News. I am Ebundomo Adikule in a major story. The Senate suspends plans to challenge President Jonathan's veto of constitutional amendment by the National Assembly. Also in this program, President-elect Mohamed Buhari dismisses talk of endorsing any candidate for the position of Senate President. The House of Representatives begins a clause-by-clause -clause consideration of the Petroleum Industry Bill. And outside Nigeria, United States-led coalition airstrike kills Islamic State's deputy leader, Abu Allah Alafri. The Senate has suspended its plan to override the President's Good Luck Jonathan's veto on the Constitutional Amendment Bill. This is to enable the federal lawmakers challenge the Supreme Court's power to stop them from taking further legislative action on the bill. The leadership of the Senate gave indications of the legislature's next line of action after a one-hour-long executive session. Okay. It began as a rift between the executive and the legislature. But now the judiciary has been sucked into a three-way battle over the Constitution Amendment Bill. The Senate had gone into a closed session with indications that the federal lawmakers would override President Jonathan's veto. But one hour later, the senators emerged from the meeting with a resolve to suspend action. We are lawmakers and we will not be lawbreakers. We are not just lawmakers, but we are very senior, responsible citizens and very senior lawmakers. And this is the apex of lawmaking in this country. Therefore, on the issue of the current constitutional review that is before the Supreme Court, we will assure, we want to assure Nigerians that we will not break any law uh, in this country, we will take appropriate action that will ensure that democracy survives. But the Lord fell on the Senate leader to shed more light on what happened behind closed doors. We, we have legal options and the legal option is to vigorously challenge uh, the order of the court which was made ex parte. It was made without us being put on notice. And I believe that we can get the court to quickly uh, determine that. And we intend to pursue that. The Senate insisted it did not do anything wrong while carrying out its legislative duties, contrary to the position of President Jonathan. The lawmakers also disclosed that the President had still not returned the original version of the bill sent to him. There was a resolution uh, taken on the floor of the Senate for the original copy of the bill uh, to be returned. The, um, that resolution has been communicated to Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief, and up till now we haven't uh, gotten back the original. We have uh, our suspicions why the original has not been returned. With only a few weeks remaining to the end of the tenure of the two arms of government, it is clear that the National Assembly is not prepared to back down. But for now, the Senate has decided to stay action, pending when it completes its legal battle with the Supreme Court. 
The River State Governorship Election Petition Tribunal has ordered that court process be served on Governor-elect in Yesomwiki by either posting it on the gate of his residence or that of the State Secretariat of the People's Democratic Party. This was after the three-member panel which held its inaugural sitting in Abuja was told that the Governor-elect had been evading service in the petition challenging his victory. The petitioner, Dakuku Peterside of the All Progressives Congress, as through his counsel, Rotimi Akiridulu, urged the tribunal to grant an order for substituted service on the defendant. In a short ruling, Justice Muazu Pindiga granted the prayer and order that service be effected on the defendant. This is uh, the inaugural sitting of the tribunal, and as, as is customary, uh, the chairman of the tribunal gave his inaugural address uh, in which he made promises to members of the bar, the public and the press and uh, asking for a cooperation and promising that uh, they would dispense justice to all manner of men, everybody before them. Uh, he counted the number of petitions they have five petitions in all, all against uh, uh, PDP and its candidate. And in our reply, on, on behalf of the bar, we promised cooperation with the tribunal. Uh, and then we went ahead because uh, uh, the APC and our candidate, uh, the Kuku Peter side, had uh, before the court the motionless party for substituted service. And we took the motionless party for substituted service and it was granted. President-elect Momodi Buhari is denied endorsing any individual for Senate presidency or any position in the Senate. He insists that it would not interfere in the process of selecting principal leaders in both chambers of the National Assembly. In a statement released in Abuja on Wednesday, General Buhari brushed off insinuations in the media that he was in support of a particular senator's emergence as leader or that he belonged to any camp pushing for the emergence of a leader from a particular part of the country. The president-elect added that the insinuations were probably born out of people's expectations based on the way things had happened in the past, but reminded Nigerians that change had truly come. Members of the House of Representatives on Wednesday began a clause-by-clause -clause consideration of the report on the Petroleum Industry Bill. The report was presented by Chairman of the Adok House Committee on PIB, Ishaka Bawa, on the floor of the House. Before the presentation, Bawa, who is also the Chief Whip, urged his colleagues to accelerate the consideration of the report because of its importance. Pai Samuel has more. At resumption of plenary on Wednesday, members of the House went into a closed-door meeting to deliberate on the all-important petroleum industry bill. Shortly after the meeting, the members settled down for their legislative duties. First on their priority list is the PIB, which had been pending for a while. But before the lawmakers opted for a clause-by-clause -clause consideration of the report, the Chief Whip, Isia Kabawa, gave an overview of the document. The objective of the bill, Mr. Chairman, is to create a conducive business environment for the petroleum operation. He argued that the bill will create a conducive environment for petroleum business in Nigeria, as well as enhance adequate fuel supply across the country. The first clause easily sold true, but the second one did not enjoy easy passage. So my advice, in line with the Supreme Court ruling, since it has actually been extensively provided for in the Constitution, it should be deleted. That provision is already in the Constitution. Reproducing it in any act makes it inconsistent by the doctrine of covering the field. I was expecting Honorable Samsokwa to show the contradiction between this current provision as being proposed in the PIB and the Constitution. Rather, what he did was only to confirm that we have similar provisions in the Constitution. In my own opinion, therefore, there is no contradiction. At the best, we can say, is surplusage. And in law, that much is allowed. After the arguments by members, 
the deputy speaker stepped down clause two for further consideration. At least down, one lawmaker, Abuba Karmomo, made his feelings known minister, on what he described uh, as the enormous powers given to the office of the, the Minister of Petroleum. Uh, he raised an observation on clause six and urged the House to reduce the excess powers of the minister in the pending bill. The lawmaker would rather have a situation where the minister will be answerable to the president on key decisions in the oil industry. We are having this power, and if you go down into the bill, you discover that uh, the powers of the minister on this uh, petroleum is just too enormous to the extent that uh, in due course it will be an utopus as far as uh, petroleum matter is concerned. At the end, clause 6.1G was carried while clause 6.1F and 6.2 were stepped down for amendment before adjournment. The PIB report has 368 pages and 312 sections. Pyre Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. The call for immediate review of the high cost of running government in the country continues to generate reactions. Some see it as a ploy by the outgoing administration to create pitfalls for the new government. Others are of the opinion that it is a necessary step that will ensure even development in the nation. In this report, Oluwashi Yadigoke engages an economist on budgeting. Every establishment needs a budget to guide its mission. A budget is a financial document or plan prepared and used to project future income and expenses. It is made and approved in advance for the year in which it is to be used or implemented. Such a document is expected to have certain features in order to achieve definite set goals and objectives. However, in the Nigerian experience, allowances are credible to government functionaries in different arms of government as influence and spend in questionable ways over the years what we realize the revenue we have not been able to save or uh, invest most of it has been spent either our recurrent expenditure privilege mismanagement and that's why we are where we are today most of the revenue brought in um, were invested in recurrent expenditure for paying salaries and uh, which eventually we know had value to the economy. The National Assembly has passed Nigeria's 2015 budget five months into the year, but it has not yet come into effect. The president is yet to sign it into law. This in its own way raises a question of whether or not there is a need to review allowances agreeable to government functionaries as a pitfall for the incoming administration. But I believe very strongly that, that somebody who has been there before, uh, coming back with a body language of zero tolerance to corruption, you will be able to gather a crack team. We have a lot of waste outside there. Some of the features of a budget are accurate income projections, enough categories to give you a meaningful picture of where money goes, cost cutting mechanism, and most importantly, a positive attitude. Could these be pointers to a productive budget for national development? The amount must not be spent in the current expenditure. It must not be consumed. It must be, it must be used to develop infrastructure. Your greatest resource, the greatest resource of any company or any, or any country, are actually the people. Nigerians hope with the coming of the new administration come May 29, every citizen will feel the development in every part of the country. Uluwashe Yadigoki, Kwa TV News, Lagos. A charity organization, Support Our Troops Foundation, has presented President Goodluck Jonathan with a certificate of bravery for his efforts at combating domestic terrorism. The group, which had been lending support to troops at the front lines, also commended the government for the recent successes of the military. Founder of the charity organization made the presentation at the presidential villa, Abuja. Inspector General of Police Solomon Arase has dispatched a special crack squad to tackle cartism, kidnapping and other vices in Edo State within 24 hours of his confirmation as substantive police hemsman. The squad is headed by the Deputy Commissioner of Police in charge of Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad. A police statement indicates that the new squad will draw operatives from the police mobile force 
Criminal Intelligence and Investigation Department, Explosives Ordinance Department and State Anti-Robbery Section SAS. Police spokesman Emmanuel Ojuku says the step taken by the IG is in line with the commitment to ensure the protection of life and property as well as build a people-oriented police force. Following the raising down of over a hundred houses resulting in the death of 35 persons and over 200 displaced persons in Vat and Foron districts of Barkinladi local government area in Plateau State, Emmanuel Lohman, Barkinladi local government boss, has called on the federal government to step up security to halt the ongoing massacre in the state. Lohman made this call while addressing journalists in Plateau State. It claims the insurgents have better weapons and strategies in comparison to the special task force hence the call for special intervention from the federal government I discover the firearms of the terrorists are more than that of the security agencies because the security agencies themselves they are even afraid I'm there to fast from Barikiladi local government very close to Barikiladi town do you know what we were together with the FCA. see the Fulani were on the other side they were even telling the STF if they are man enough, they should come. The Fulanis were there, well armed with suffocated uh, equipment. Do you know the next thing the STF commander said that we should go back? And since then, nothing has been done. The definitely knows the location of these people. They know the, the caliber of uh, uh, the weapons they have. I, I thought immediate action should be taken to safeguard the occurrence of all these kind of ugly situation, but nothing has been done. So it's, 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 it's a point that is so much worry some of us in leadership. If those that if you, you, you feel that they are in a better position to do something to better the society, they are not doing it, then you, it weakens you really. Following the deteriorating security situation in some part of Plateau, the state government has imposed a curfew of seven on seven local government areas between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information and Communication, C.C. Bello, in a statement listed the affected councils. They include Barkinladi, Riyam, Just East, Mangu, Wasi, Langtang, North and South local government areas. The State Emergency Management Agency was also directed to provide relief materials to internally displaced persons in the affected areas. As security agencies have been deployed to ensure compliance and forestall future occurrence in the areas. The citizens of the state are also called upon to be security conscious and report any suspicious movement around them, urging them to go about their normal activities. It's the Core TV Primetime News. We'll take a break and we'll be back with details of the unending field scarcity across the country. Don't go away. Introducing Smart Connect. We get plenty of woof to allow you talk, text, and browse in your phone for 10 in the morning. Say, you know, say we just 200 naira recharge card. I tell the summer be with 200% bonus to yam more with any network. <laughs> hey. Now you not call me your fiance. Relax. In fact, I don't buy your own address in every day. As correct person, anytime I recharge 200 naira and above, Smart Connect they suffer me with free internet to browse. If you want to make your family follow you and enjoy, buy your four in one family pack <laughs> for the price of one. Oh baby. <laughs> This girl too, na family and friends. No carry last to buy your Airtel SIM today. Airtel, the smartphone network. Many thanks for being there with us on Core TV Primetime News. If you just joined, here are the stories that made our headlines. The Senate suspends plans to challenge President Jonathan's veto of constitutional amendment by the National Assembly. President-elect Mohamed Buhari dismisses talk of endorsing any candidate for the position of Senate President.
The House of Representatives begin a close by close consideration of the petroleum industry bill. And for more on Core TV news and other information, you can visit our social media platforms on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Core TV news, our Twitter handle at Core TV news NG. And for videos on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Core TV, little space, then news. With the fuel scarcity still persisting, some fuel stations are cashing in on the situation on ground by selling products, especially petrol, for exorbitant prices as high as 150 naira per liter. Black marketers are also not left out. Our correspondent Olaji Mokyolatuji, who went around some filling stations in Lagos, brings us a findings in this report. Despite several meetings and promises by the Ministry of Finance, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Department of Petroleum Resources, Petroleum Product Pricing and Regulatory Agency, and the Petroleum and Product Marketing Companies, including oil marketers. The fuel scarcity in the country appears to have defied all solutions as the scarcity continues to worsen, heightening the suffering of motorists and the public in general. It has become increasingly difficult on a daily basis to buy the commodity. And for those Lagos residents, getting fuel has been nothing short of a traumatic experience. All this stress is too much for us. We are half stress in this country. It's too much. So I'm from uh, Iko, you come to this area, you come and fight for it. Ah, it's just too bad. Like me now, I brought kegs and I packed my car there. My kegs are here, so I'm just waiting anyone that comes first. If it is the keg, if it is the car, no problem. But I don't want to be at the... Um, I don't want to be at the losing side. The experience has not been funny at all. You know, every time you need fuel, you have to stay in the queue for an hour, two hours. Sometimes you, you wouldn't get. I was in the queue for about an hour and a half at Mobile. I strongly believe this particular issue has been so politicized. I don't think this is just an ordinary fuel scarcity. A manager at one of the filling stations, however, is just to say on why the scarcity has persisted. Most of the filling station nowadays, before the vehicle bring there, before, if you, if you want to hire a truck from a depot, it's 70,000. But now they're collecting 200,000. So, and it's not everybody that have that type of money. So, most of the filling station will not work. Those ones that are working, you know, they have to pay more than, and at the same time, the demand. Is more than the supply. With the long queues at the fuel petrol stations opened, consumers have become desperate and are buying fuel at any amount available, even though this prices are ridiculous. But we hope that the end to this crisis is nearer than expected. Olaji Mokyolatuji, All TV News, Lagos. Quite worrisome, right? And barely one week after the discovery of locations of multiple vandalism of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company pipelines along Ogiri Axis of Ogun State, the state government seems to have made another breakthrough with the discovery of a filling station selling a product suspected to be unrefined crude oil to customers as diesel. Olaji Moke Olatuji has more in this report. The problem was made by the state task force in the enforcement and compliance with official fuel pump price in the state. This man was a victim of the suspected oil refined petroleum product being sold at a feeding station in Abelkota. The product, according to research, has already damaged his vehicle and he was at the feeding station to complain and demand for justice before men of the one state task force on the enforcement and compliance with the official fuel pump price in the state came to his rescue. And that's the money I tell me the money just under the money just under us. What kind of fuel do you say you want to buy? I say I want to buy this. This is what they said to us. Also monitoring the sale of fuel across the state's capital and how the service buffer with those who have the commodity but refuse to sell to people. Suffering us. They asked us to go and bring cake. We went and bought a new cake and lined up. We have been here for hours. After getting to the point now, they say we should go and bring car. I'm going to Mina. See, I've been begging them. See, look at the car there. In all the filling stations visited, attendants were compelled to change their pump price from 150 naira to the official price of 87 naira per litre, and the people were asked to be orderly. 
while they monitor selling of the commodity. The fate of those arrested could not be determined at the time of filing this report as task force officials could be needed to report this case to higher authorities before speaking to journalists. For larger reports, report TV News. Residents of Kaduna Metropolis are blaming the outgoing Janison administration for the pervasive fuel shortage in the city and other parts of the country. They express surprise that in spite of assurances from the government, fuel queues have yet to disappear. Some of them are, however, hopeful that the incoming government will lay the issue of fuel scarcity to rest once and for all. Amina Nebi has more in this report presented from our studio. It's 8 a.m. in Kaduna, and already there is a long line of motorists waiting to fill their tanks at filling stations. This is a situation in virtually all the stations where there are fuel. But most of the filling stations don't even have the commodity in stock, and consequently, the residents are having a hard time getting the scarce commodity. Many of them here have been on the queue as early as 5 a.m. I've been here around 5 o'clock in the morning. So this is like after to 10 or after 10. So we don't know whether we are going to get fuel today or not. But I can't tell you exactly what the cost is because the cost should be from the government. We don't know. It's only them that can explain to us why we are, we are not getting fuel, why we are producing the same product. We're always queuing for fuel. You come with your money, no fuel and black market, all these things. I pray Buhari will stop this black market issue. Some of the attendants who refused to speak on camera blinked the situation of the non-availability of fuel at your main source of supply. But for many residents, the government is responsible for the problem. Well, I've been here since uh, 5.30, to be honest. And um, from the look of things, things are not going on uh, very well, honestly speaking. The fuel scarcity is getting worse. I don't know what's going on. The government should, have, should do something, please. But I left my house as early as 5.30 a.m. this morning. And I got here about 5, uh, by 15 minutes to 6. And I've been on this queue since that time. And it has not been moving. But reports reaching us now that it is moving. And I think one of the major problems was that they had a fire incident yesterday. And they exhausted all their fire extinguishers. And they said they could not sell until they get new stock. And we have been on the queue waiting. Abubakar Abdullah, who prefers to speak in Hausa, however, believes that the problem will end as soon as the coming government takes charge. Uh, like, uh, like yesterday now, I didn't, there is no fuel in town, so I went and bought a black market. So I, I work with black market, I cannot even make my this thing. So today I have to come as early as 6.30 to join the queue so that I will be able to get, uh, for the control price, I will be able to get my fuel. I've been on the queue since 5 a.m. because the fools will get fuel. I'm blaming the present government, but I believe that this new government, everything will be in charge. For now, Kaduna residents just like older Nigerians have to spend hours on fuel queues. The alternative is to buy the commodity at a higher rate at the black markets. In the same vein, Kano residents want the federal government to take all steps necessary to end the lingering fuel shortage across the country. This is in the aftermath of the not com in commercial activities in the Asian city as a result of the scarcity. Many more tourists who spoke with Core TV News at filling stations in Kano complained of spending long hours on queues. Black market oppression is, however, witnessing a boom in the metropolis. We hear from news that uh, the money, the, the, the government, they will never give the major marketers the money to, uh, for, for transportation. That is why that is why the fuel is so scarce in, in the country. Uh, there, is, there is fuel inside every filling station, but they don't want to sell the people. I don't know why. The problem is that we go, I go many uh, filling stations to get the fuel there. They are not, pro, uh, they are not uh, fuel. We come here to uh, this and get it. See how the queue be here. Because since we are trying to get it, we suffer here too much. Because see, uh, my friends here, a lot of people here, there is no, 
I don't know what is moving. I go follow the queue. Say somebody call remove it for the queue. Actually, according to them, what they are saying that is the marketers are on strike. They refuse to go and buy the fuel from where they used to buy it. That is Patakot or Lagos. I don't know. But according to the news, that is what we had. And we have been suffering for this fuel since January or even December. Labour activists have barricaded the entrance to the National Identity Management Commission in Abuja in protest of the alleged plan to sack 1,000 staff of the government agency. Many of the protesters are civil rights activists and they say the solidarity protest is because the workers to be affected are members of the Nigeria Labour Congress. Speaking through the spokesman, they say they would not be in a hurry to lift the barricade until something is done to reverse the sack of the affected staff. You could see that this protest is a national one. National Identity Management Commission is having problem. By virtue of our work, an injury to one is injury to all. Yes. It is on that note all agencies across Abuja we gather here today to safeguard the interest of our members here. The NIMSI management will just describe them in a very simple term. They are very ungodly. Recently, there was a problem they accused the federal civil staff, self, the federal civil service staff, that there was a fraud, uh, that there was a, that there was a fraud, there was forgery of certificates of promotion letters given by the federal civil service. Apart from that, apart from that. They said they will sack the federal civil service uh, staff of 1,000 in NIMSI. They now placed us on disciplinary action. I personally, Mwabaji Ugoma Regina, I am affected. Despite accusations of embezzlement and violations of labor laws, the management of the National Identity Management Commission says the recent spate of protests was sponsored by individuals bent on forestalling official procedures. It also denied all the allegations ruled out by protesters and picketed the Commission's officers. NIMC Director General Chris Oyemena said at a news conference in Abuja that some unnamed senior staff were behind the two days of protests. Furthermore, it is not true that NIMSI has planned to sack or retrench 1,000 workers, as claimed by the Association of Senior Civil Servants of Nigeria. However, there are 406 senior members of staff who's falsif who falsified their records, their service records, and therefore have been profiting from that fraud and have been formally reported to the appropriate offices for further action after we followed due process in dealing with these cases. I do not know of any Thirty billion naira that was embezzled. Of course, I'm the one that is being accused, so it's going to be difficult for me to come and say to you, yes, I embezzled funds. But there's a proper procedure. If you say someone is, has corruptly enriched himself, you must present the facts, and you must present them in a manner that suggests to everyone that you're serious. So we deny it in its entirety, and with respect to that approval, not all of that 
30 billion has been released. It was meant for a three-year period, and we have thus far been getting it gradually. Go to the Ministry of Finance website. You will see it is not hidden. Go to our audited accounts. You will see the figures. It's not hidden. And then if you have a specific claim, whether you are an individual or an association, please come forward. The Federal Executive Council has approved road contracts in Bielsa, Delta and Undo states in excess of 30 billion naira. It has also worked out arrangements for President Goodluck Jonathan to take a tour of the east-west road in the Nine Delta, which the government says is 90% completed. Minister of the Nine Delta, Steve Oru, disclosed this at the end of a meeting presided over by President Goodluck Jonathan. So uh, the Ministry of Niger Delta got four projects ratified by council today. One has to do with uh, the construction of Zarama Okodia Biseni Road in Yenogoa local government by the state. The other one has to do with uh, construction of Agadagba, Akotobo, Isanya, Ovia River and bridge in the Rayleigh local government of Ondo State. The construction of Agadagba, Akotobo, Iyasa, Uvia River Road and Bridge in the Rayleigh local government of Ondo State is in favor of CGC Nigeria Limited in the sum of 15.628 billion. While the construction of Amasoma Igbedi Road in Kulukuma, Opokomo, local government of Bayelsa State, in favor of Messrs. Dantum Construction, Nigeria Limited, is in the sum of 2.767 billion naira with a completion period of 18 months. And the last one is the construction of Ofagbe Orie, it does the Ozoro Road which is poor from area Ada Road in Isoko North and Isoko South local government areas of Delta State in favor of Messrs. Fame Highway Company Limited in the sum of 6.675 billion naira with a completion period of 24 months. The state governor Ibukunle Amoso has revealed efforts by his administration to prevail on the federal government to resuscitate the abandoned international airport project initiated 10 years ago. Her correspondent Olatu Jumoke Olatuji has more on this report. On a tour on the site of the proposed international airport project located at a Muslim village, Wasami area in a Wekoro local government area of Obun state. The governor, Ibukula Moussa, appeals to the federal government to complete the airport project, noting that would be of immense benefit to the government. He further maintained that though the project is purely a federal government-sponsored one, the state government is ready to facilitate it so as to better the lots of the people. Their money, we are not paupers like that. Yes. Build for us, let them have all the amenities that they will need, social amenities, schools, hospital, all of those things. Do it well for them. They will allow you to do what you want to do. So for me, I'm taking that up as well with the federal government. Whoever they are going to give eventually to do this, we will encourage them to say, well, CCC is working for you. Why not? Let's sign. We as a state have agreed with them. Give them the necessary we are with all. I'm also afraid to assure the people of the state government's plan to relocate and build new settlement areas that would be adorned with basic social amenities like schools, hospitals, portable water, and electricity supply, among others. But let me use this opportunity to, to appeal to our fathers, our mothers, that for development to happen, all of us must pay some kind of price. Because now we are going to Peru now. People will tell me that this is our land. No, let the land be used for things that will, everybody will benefit. He further appreciated the residents of the village and assured them of the government's total commitment to all his... 
The Asha State's government has debunked allegations claiming that a son of the governor, Rauf Aragbeshala Kabir Aragbeshala, was arrested at the Maritala Mohammed International Airport on May 12, 2015, with a large sum of money in hard currencies. The allegation was debunked by the state's director, Bureau of Communication and Strategy. It went to claim the authors of the wicked and malicious lie are doggedly pursuing the agenda by engaging in an aggressive push for the falsehood to reach a larger population, especially using the social media. The statement claims the Ganga Rukbashala neither traveled anywhere nor had any encounter with any security personnel on the said day. Okolawa claims the evil minds at work are out to drag an innocent young man's name into the dirt in order to get at his father. Sina Rukbashala has maintained the life of a moderate family man with a set of highly disciplined children who cannot be found wanting on issues of morals and societal values. Okolawa further advised members of the public to dismiss the allegations because it is just another handiwork of mischievous minds. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has arranged the Kwara State Commissioner for Information, Olatunji Morum Foye, and Okwe Saraki, Senior Special Advisor on Millennium Development Goals, to Governor Abdul Fattah Ahmed before a federal high court in Lorraine. Morum Foye and Okwe Saraki, who is cousin to the former Kwara State Governor, were docked for offenses bordering on abuse of office, awarding contracts to cronies, diversion of public funds and money laundering. The Information Commissioner is facing a three-count charge, while Saraki, who was arraigned alongside two of his companies, were arraigned separately on a five-count charge. According to the charges, Morofoye allegedly used his previous office of senior special advisor to the former governor to allegedly enrich himself by awarding a contract of over 200 million naira for the renovation of health facilities in the state to a company in which he has interest and was the sole signatory to the account. EFCC said Saraki similarly abused his office and laundered state funds for his personal benefit by awarding inflated contracts to companies owned by his crooners. The accused persons pleaded not guilty to the charge when it was read to them, and after listening to the submissions of both counsel and bill, trial judge Justice Faji admitted the accused to bill in the sum of 50 million naira and two shorties in like sum. The case has been adjourned to September 22nd and October 20 for hearing. With the increased rate of patronage of genetically modified organisms, GMO, it has been predicted that in 2025, one out of two children will be autistic. Briefing journalists at the CDHR building Lagos, a representative of a civil society group, Nigerians Against GMO, says Nigeria should imitate other countries who have shut their doors against the disguised deadly increase in food production. Patient Sajiboye has won this report. Following the signing into law of the Biosafety Bill last month by President Goodluck Jonathan, the act that was described as a milestone in the domestication of modern biotechnology in Nigeria is now facing criticisms. As a civil society group, Nigerians Against GMO raised the alarm and taxed Nigerians to stand up against GMO, describing it as a scam and chariot. GMOs, according to research, are artificial and unnatural plants known as Monsanto products, created by scientific manipulation of plant genes using chemicals that are highly carcinogenic and thus very harmful to the health. A representative of the group, Badebo Roots Vivo, says, not only is it harmful to the health, it will cause a fall in farmers' income, as they will no longer be able to replant seeds, but will always have to buy seeds from the chemical companies. These companies came claim patent rights over these seeds, and the seeds are sterile as well. They cannot be grown the next year. Calling for a total comeback to organic seeds, he insists Nigeria is richly blessed with all needed for natural farming and should take a cue from countries like Japan and the Gambia, who still fare well without the Monsanto products. There is no reason why we cannot focus on manufacturing and processing our produce. In this day and age, we are still, we are still exporting raw products. Road Survivor also says, since the call for extermination has started since last year and nothing has been done about it, 
The group will assert embarking on enlightenment take to legal action. The calls for the stop of GMOs are now being directed to President-elect Muhammadu Buhari to ensure the stoppage of the bill. Patience, Ajiboye, TV News, Lagos. We'll take another break on the Core TV Primetime News and return with business, sports and other stories from outside Nigeria. Every day of the week will bring to you divergent views on news making the headline. If people who commit crime are being rewarded with national honors, with national appointments, then where are we going in this country? It's not about who, whether it was Jonathan or whether you are going to have a worry. It's the kind of political structure we run. Sometimes it gets confrontational. We are talking about a Buhari who at 41 became head of state. The man did not exhibit the attribute of somebody that is strong intellectually. So, Comrade, you're saying if you become governor, you're going to bring back Okada? Of course. You will bring back the market women from the streets? Me, don't put words into my mouth. On Core Digest, we bring all of this to the court of public opinion, where you are the judge. Now to business. The Senate has confirmed the appointment of Munir Guazo as Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission at plenary on Wednesday. The confirmation by the unanimous decision followed consideration of the screening report of the Senate Committee on Capital Markets read by its chairman, Senator Ayo Adeshio. He presented a detailed profile of Guazo and informed the committee of that Munir Guazo is fully deserving of confirmation as substantive director general of the commission. The Federal Executive Council on Wednesday approved the establishment of the first maritime university for the country to be located in Wari Delta State. It also approved the revised national policy on micro, small and medium enterprises. Minister of Information Patricia Kwashiki, Minister of Del Niger Delta Affairs Stephen Oru, and the Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment Kenneth Kobani briefed State House correspondents at the end of the meeting presided over by President Goodluck Jenison. The Minister also said the Council approved the report of the Ministerial Implementation Committee on harmonization of taxes and levies across the Federation. For a part, Kobani explained that the revised national policy on micro, small and medium enterprises was done because SMEs are strategic and important functionaries in any economy. According to Kobani, a more holistic approach was taken to ensure that extensive consultation with all the stakeholders had to take place and they all endorsed this particular one and also came with a recommendation that will replace the National Consultative Council with the National Council for Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Council to ensure a major contribution to the economy. And now to sports. Before that, we join Sabena Izoku for the Stock Market Report. Court TV News Stock Market Report. Hello there and welcome to the Stock Market Report segment with me, Sabena Izoku. The equities market on the floor of the Nigerian stock has ended on a positive note today, as Nigerian All Shares Index appreciated by 0.27% to close at 34,208.30 basis point. The market capitalization moves up to 11.61 uh, trillion naira. In all, the total volume of 350.8 million units of shares, valid at 3.35 billion, were exchanged in 4,154 deals. And on the gainer side, seven are top the chart, followed by Guinness, Beta Class, Mobile Oil, and Glasgow Smith Climb. And on the flip side, total top the chart, followed by 40 Oil, PZ Custom, Flower Mill, Union Bank of Nigeria. And for the top trade, United Bank. For Africa, top the chart, followed by First Bank Nitro and Holdings, Axis Bank, Sky Bank, and Presco. Just before we wrap up the stock market report, here is the currency trade for today. I am Sabana Isoko.
your TV News Stock Market Report. Thank you for being there now to sports. Coach Manu Garba has pressed the Flying Eagles on their winning start on a training tour of Germany ahead of the 2015 on the 20 World Cup in New Zealand. The African champions brushed past Hoffenheim on the 23-5-2 on Tuesday as part of the build-up to the on the 20 World Cup, which starts on May 30. Garba said the team needs to work on their defense by taking on more defensive responsibilities and finishing to be better in front of goal. The Flying Eagles' next game will be on Friday afternoon in Nomberg against the Nomberg on the 23s before they play their final warm-up match against Freiburg on the 23 team on May 19th. Barcelona reached their first Champions League final since 2011, despite Pep Guardiola's Bayern Munich salvaging pride in the return leg in Germany. Trailing 3-0 from the first leg, Bayern revived their hopes through Medi Benacci's early downward header. Barca leveled when Luis Suarez squared for a tapping from Neymar, who drilled in after the pair combined again. Robert Lewandowski and Thomas Muller both called in as Bayern won on the night, but Barca still progressed. And now to stories outside Nigeria. The second in command of Islamic State has been killed in a U.S. led coalition airstrike in northern Iraq, the Iraqi Ministry of Defense says. Abdul Rahman Mustafa Muhammad, also known as Abu al al Fri, was inside a mosque in Talafa that was targeted. He had been meeting dozens of militants who also died in the strike. In recent weeks, there were unconfirmed reports that Afri had taken temporary charge of IS operations. A Burundi army general says Pierre Unkurunziza has been overthrown amid unrest over his bid to be re-elected for third term. Major General Gadiford Niyumbari said a salvation committee had been set up, but his level of support is unclear. Thousands protesting against the president in the capital, Bujumbura, are now reported to be celebrating. President Unkuruziza, who was in Tanzania at the time of the coup, is reportedly on his way back to Bunjumbura, capital of Burundi, after what the president's Twitter handle said was a failed coup attempt. Unkuruziza has been meeting other East African leaders to discuss the crisis. His aide dismissed the coup claims as a joke. In a series of Twitter postings, the Burundi presidency at first said the situation was under control and that there was no coup, then that the attempted coup had failed. Niyum Bari, in a statement read to reporters in a military base, said he did not recognize the leadership because the president's bid for third term violated the constitution. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said now is a critical moment for Russia and for Russian separatists to fulfill a peace deal meant to end violence in eastern Ukraine. There was a strong agreement among all of the NATO members that this is a critical moment for action by Russia and by the separatists to live up to the Minsk agreement, referring to a ceasefire accord that has been regularly broken. The Minsk agreement calls for the withdrawal of all heavy weapons and foreign fighters from eastern Ukraine, the release of all prisoners in Russian custody, and allowing election monitors from the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe to begin preparations for local elections. Kerry added that it was also critical for observers from the OSCE to be allowed into the conflict areas to monitor the truth. And that's it on Core TV Primetime News tonight. But before we go, a quick reminder of a major stories. President-elect Muhammad Buhari has dismissed talks of endorsing any candidate for the position of Senate President.
the House of Representatives has started a close-by-close -close consideration of the petroleum industry bill. And it's a wrap on the news tonight. On behalf of the entire news crew, I am Ibn Loma wishing you a pleasant night rest.